Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. Pardon our appearance, we are under construction. I had somebody comment in one of our last few videos saying how ugly that this uh, orange snow fence is that we put up here temporarily. They thought that we had this up year round. It is just because we are under construction in the garage. Right now we are kind of in a holding pattern because our concrete guys are so backed up. We're about three weeks away from getting concrete poured. So really not much else is moving forward with the garage for a little while, but I have a special guest coming to visit us today. It's another YouTube channel and I wanna show you how he's gonna help us solve a big problem here on the property. Evie, Sadie, come here. Good girls. So I don't know if I've ever actually formally introduced our two dogs here. Uh, one is Evie, one is Sadie. Evie is the smaller one. She's a hound terrier mix. She's about six years old. And the other one is Sadie, the bigger one. She is a coon hound and uh, she's about three years old. Good girl. So this is Sadie here. She's the bigger one. And this is Evie. Evie, come here. Hey, come on. Can you say hi? Good girl. Yeah, you can see she's six years old and she's starting to get gray around the muzzle already. But yeah, so that is Evie and Sadie. And when we first started this project in the garage, we had a chain link fence that you can see. It goes all the way around the yard down there in front of the pond, comes up and it connected right where the garage was. So at the beginning of this project, we had to take that fence out and we put this snow fence in temporarily just to keep these two dogs fenced in. Evie's, I'm not too worried about her. I don't think she'd wander too far, but Sadie being a coon hound, when she gets on a scent, she is gone. We've tried taking her for runs on the side-by-side, -side, even with a, an electric collar. Once she gets running on the trail, you cannot call her back. She just is in an all out sprint and you know, it's all you can do to keep up with her on the side by side. So not only is the snow fence ugly, but it doesn't do its job. Sadie, come here. Come on, girl. Come on, Sadie. Come on. Good girl. So yeah, she gets over that pretty easy. When I first put it up, I thought I'd be all right, but I think the problem with this is, is I spread my posts out too far so the snow fence can sag one way or the other. And we found out the hard way a couple times whenever I was out either doing firewood or doing something down in the yard down there, all of a sudden I'd see Sadie right beside me and I'm like, how the heck did you get out? So not only is the fence ugly, but it wasn't keeping the dogs in. So it's time that we've got a new solution for this and it's gonna make the property look a lot nicer. You're not gonna run away from us, are you? No. All right, so if there's two things you guys know about me, one is that I'm an accountant, which inherently makes me cheap, and two, if there's something that I can do myself, I'm gonna try to do it. And so when it came to installing an electric dog fence, an underground dog fence, uh, I actually had a national company come out here and give us a quote on putting one in so that we can get rid of our ugly chain link fence and more importantly, that orange snow fence. So uh, they quoted me about three to $4,000 to come in. So right there kicks in my cheap gene. And uh, so I start getting on YouTube and looking up, okay, how do I do this myself? And I came across Neil's channel here, Dig Drive DIY. And uh, Neil, tell us a little bit about your channel and what you do. And thanks for coming. Yeah. It's great to have you thanks here. Thanks for having me, yeah. So on Dig Drive DIY, I do all those things. Yep. Dig Drive DIY. I couldn't, couldn't hone in on just one thing to do. So I've got a backhoe and a, mini excavator that we do digging projects with. I've got a lot of garden tractors and compact utility tractor stuff that I do. And we do a lot of firewood yeah. stuff, just like you, and uh, a lot of DIY projects, so. So the, the DIY underground dog fence is not, I mean, that's a pretty small portion of your channel. Right. The rest is all the excavating and things like that. Right. And, and yeah, he does firewood, so he's all right in our book here. <laughs> yeah, we heat our house with firewood. I've got an outdoor wood boiler, so always making lots of firewood. We got our house, our garage, and our shop that we all heat with one boiler. So it's a hungry, hungry beast. How much do you burn in a year? Probably about 13 to 15 cords. God. It's a lot. That's yeah. why you gotta have some heavy equipment. And that's probably why you don't have any to spare to sell it all, do you? No, we don't sell any. Matter of fact, I'm always scrounging for that last bit in the fall. And yep. So, yep. Well, anyway, that's what Neil is here. He's gonna give us a hand putting in our underground electric dog fence. Now, we said at the beginning that uh, to have a national company come in and do it, at least for the size that we're gonna do is three to $4,000. What do you think just the materials is to do it yourself would cost? Yeah, so there's several different systems and options available, but for the one we're gonna use, we chose a PetSafe brand. 
-hmm. And then I upgraded the wire from what comes in the kit as well because I feel it's it's an important upgrade. We're gonna have five to six hundred dollars in it, depending okay. on the size of your perimeter that you choose. And you've got obviously a lot of acreage here, so you got a little bit more money in the wire itself, but you can do it pretty pretty inexpensively if you just get a system yourself. Yeah, and I will put a link in the description down below to all of the materials that Neil here actually purchased ahead of time and brought for us. He did a lot of the legwork, so again, thank you so much for yeah. kind of making this easy on me. I just said, hey, you wanna come over and, and give us a chance to do a collaboration video? He's doing all the work, so. Yeah. Well, this is actually a fun thing to do, and it's a good DIY project because there's a lot of ways you can make a implement to attach to your tractor mm -hmm. and put in wire. So if you've got a, a metal shop or you got a little fabrication skills, anybody can pretty much do this. And especially if they're just doing it at one time, they can make it work. So yeah. it's a good project. Well, before we get started, we'll show you the tractor and what you've fabricated in your home garage to lay wire down for us here. All right, so Neil, this is your tractor. Tell us a little bit about this tractor. What year is it? How much does it weigh? What's, what's the horsepower? Because if we're going to be laying wire in the ground, we need some weight to pull, right? Yes. So this tractor is well weighted up. This is a early 90s John Deere 316. It was, uh, it was dropped off at my house because the engine was bad. So in true DIY form, I yanked out the original engine. I put in a Robin Subaru engine. It's a 25 horse gas engine. And that's why I nickname and call this tractor Brutus because it's, uh, it's a little bit stronger than stock. I got oversized <laughs> tires on it. These are 26 inch by 12 by 12 tires that would normally be on, on a larger framed like 400 series John Deere garden tractor. And then they're weighted up. So I got some fluid in the tires. I've got a 120 pound cast iron starter weight here. And of course a 25, no, these are 40 pound uh, stacking weights on the outside. And then I've got weight back here. And this weight here isn't so much for traction as, as, it, as it is to keep the knife in the ground, so. Yeah, because your three point is gravity only. So right. you, need, you need down pressure. Yep, and what I found without the weight, it would just float up over any obstacles. So this keeps it in the ground and plus, I was not using any of these uh, <laughs> weights at all. <laughs> they get much more use like this than they do on any weight bar. So what do you think the total weight of the tractor as it sits right now is? Oh boy. I'm gonna guess the whole tractor is maybe 1,200 pounds or so. That's pretty good for a tractor this size. Yeah, it's, yeah. there's a lot of weight in this rear end. As a matter of fact, there's so much I was worried about my ramp of my trailer door because I've never loaded this onto that trailer before. Yeah. And I thought, <laughs> might be a lot for it, but I don't know. It did okay. But. So now show us the knife that you made uh, yeah. to, to lay the wire down. So I'm I'm a, a member of the ag community. So my I'm an agronomist is my day job, and I uh, work with a lot of farmers. And this is something that if you're into farming, you'll recognize this. This is actually an anhydrous ammonia knife that they use to apply nitrogen to a corn crop. So this would be on a toolbar with like 16 other knives or 12 other knives. When they wear out, they're perfect for what I wanted to use. So this is a worn out anhydrous knife, but I took this tube, which normally brings the anhydrous ammonia down into the ground. I cut it off and I actually put a bigger tube on it so that we can feed the wire down in. And then we'll just pull this in the ground and the wire will lay right behind it. Perfect, that looks awesome. Spool holder. And we're gonna route this wire down through there. Yep. like that. Pretty simple design. We can bury it about six to eight inches deep most of the time. I like to get it in nice and deep. But if we run into some roots or some obstacles, we can shallow it up because the wire only really needs to be an inch or two below the surface and it'll work fine. I like it deep just because if you want to aerate your yard, you could still do that. Yeah, you know, minor things that occur on the surface won't affect the wire. Whereas if you just got it below the grass, then you're at risk of cutting it easily. Yep. This is a Honda, yeah. So I got to run a Hyundai for the first time when I went to the, the Con Expo and they are nice machines and I've been a bit of jealous ever since I saw you get this Adam. Yeah. Try it out.
So Brutus is a powerful tractor and it's got a lot of good traction, but it can't do anything against a gravel driveway. So Adam's just ripping through so that we can get a little depth below the driveway. I like to bury the wire deep enough that the frost won't heave it out of the ground. So if it's six, eight, even 10 inches in, I'm perfectly fine with that. And what we'll do is I'll use a old garden hose as a conduit and we can put the wire in the garden hose and that'll keep it from getting damaged by the rocks that are in the trench. the gravel driveway like I said I like to put it in either a garden hose this happens to be an old air hose that has a hole in it but we'll pull the wire through the airline hose and that'll protect it from rocks cutting and ruining the actual wire once they're in the ground so I'm just gonna stick this fish tape through there and get it across that looks like the same material as what's in like your pool string on a chainsaw like your chainsaw spring is that what it is it's yeah very similar like a spring steel yeah yeah it's just a cheap Harbor Freight fish tape, and I'm seeing why maybe it's so cheap. <laughs> there it is. Good deal. Okay. Now, if you want to go down the other end and pull the fish tape through, we'll have our wire through there. Yep. Okay, we got the wire across the driveway and it's in a conduit.
made it all the way around the entire perimeter with one 1500 foot spool. So we're only gonna have one splice in this thing except for where we connect to it coming out of the garage on the main transmitter loop. So here's my two ends. This is where we, you can see the air hose that we had buried underneath the driveway. And this is the end of my loop. I like to leave a little slack here. So I'm gonna make the splice up here. That way as it freezes and thaws, the wire can come and go a little bit. You're not trying to pull on a super taut uh, butt splice that's in the ground. So I just make it up with a silicone filled wire nut. So I'm gonna cut it like that. I'm gonna strip each end. These are silicone filled wire nuts and I've had really good luck with these. You can buy them at Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards type stores. Just get those together. Once you get that silicone on there, it is really sticky. So see it kind of splooging out of there. And I like to turn it till it starts to it's starting to twist the wires on themselves, but don't go so far that you break off the wire and then put it in there. Backfill it with a little dirt rather than rocks. Okay, we got a wire all the way around. All right, so we got to get this twisted wire into inside the building and then we'll hook that to the wall transmitter. The reason this is twisted is whenever you put the wires together and they're twisted like that, that allows the dog to cross through an area where the wire is buried. So this cancels the signal out when it's twisted upon itself. Uh -huh. And then it'll go out to the perimeter and we'll split it. And essentially one side will go one direction and one side will go the other. And it's a radio frequency is what this transmits. Okay. Basically, it's transmitting the frequency that the collar is tuned into. Okay. All right, let's see if Brutus and a 3,500 pound winch can pull him up the hill. Okay, so I went through and I just, I cut our perimeter wire that we put in previously. I'm gonna make sure I cut this extra long so I got enough wire to get to each side of this perimeter. So I cut that. It really doesn't matter which side's which. There's no, no difference. You just wanna make sure you have enough slack to let it come and go a little bit. You don't want anything really taut. And then I twist. I like to twist it until I feel it grab a hold and start to, like that right there. It's starting to twist the wires around each other. All right, we'll let that go until we get the, we gotta get it inside the garage. All right, so the system we got is a pet safe system. It's good up to, I think, five acres. Um, it's really simple, all it's got are two leads for the boundary wire connections. And we also have a lightning surge protector that we're gonna put in line of that to hopefully combat any lightning damage. But you basically plug the wires in here and then you control the width of your correction field with this dial and those are the only two settings. You can adjust the stimulation level on the collar at the collar itself. So you can turn this up to different levels of correction. Basically less shock or more shock based on how your dog behaves. We're gonna go ahead and mount the lightning protector our, our perimeter loop is going to come into here and then it will, we'll, we'll have another set of wires come out of here and then go to our junction box. We'll make sure that the system is up and working and good and then we'll go back and we'll patch up any spots where we had difficulty. There's a few places where we hit a root and we'll need to cut down through the root. 
Then we'll just make sure everything's working good, then we'll set some flags and we'll go over all that. Okay, so everything is now hooked up. We've got an exterior loop hooked into the lightning protector and then from the lightning protector up to the wall transmitter. Obviously it's plugged in, it's got power. When you first power these on, I've been scared before, this loop light has to be illuminated in order for it to show that it has continuity. And if the power, the width isn't up high enough, it won't light up. So you gotta crank up the boundary width control and then it's sending out a strong enough signal to make complete the circuits, more or less. So, and we'll be able to adjust that up and down, but it's working. So we don't have to go out and dig any wire to try to find a fault. Thankfully, no. <laughs> Whenever you're installing this wire near a woods or tree line, you're undoubtedly gonna run into some roots. And here you can see a really big one that I couldn't get through. So I went up over the top of it, knowing that I could come back and fix it later. What I'm gonna do is just saw through it and then floss the wire down. And another thing that you did was as you're going, you're marking those with little yep. white flags yep. so you know where to come back to. We had just two or three spots where I know I wanted to come back and do this, but the rest of it all went really well. So I'll just cut this. I just cut a little slot in it, get the wire kind of flossed down through there. Now the root's holding it down the ground. All right, guys, I think that's going to about wrap this one up. I still have a little bit of finished work left. I got to throw some flags out so the dogs will know where the fence is. I've got to take down the old snow fence, and then I've got some training to do with these new, with these dogs. Yeah, that is the most important part of an underground dog fence is the training. Yeah. So you're going to have a couple weeks ahead of you. Once we set the flags, that'll tell your dogs that there's a visual line there that they need to be mindful of. And then you need to train them to understand that, you know, it's not about getting shocked. It's about sticking to their perimeter. You're training your dogs to stay on your property. You're not training them to be afraid of a shock. Yeah. And I think you said to do that, you've got to walk them around with a leash for a week or two around the perimeter every time you take them out. Yep. Um, you've got to really stick to a schedule where you can't just turn them loose today for a while, let them run, and then tomorrow try to train. It's gonna have to be a like a program, more or less, where you take them around the perimeter on a leash, you introduce them to the, the, the collar emits a tone that warns them that they're approaching the boundary. Yeah. And then if they persist too much towards it, it's a correction. So when they get that static correction, that's rein, you know, reinforcing what you're trying to do with the training, and that is to stay in the property. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much, Neil, hey. for coming out. And I'd, I'd like to say helping me install this fence, but I didn't do a whole lot. Thank you for installing the fence for me. You've been a great it's, cameraman. <laughs> thank you, yeah. It's, uh, it, this is probably my favorite part of YouTube is all the people that we get to meet. And everybody's just so nice. So anyway, if you guys enjoyed this one, give me a big thumbs up. Click that subscribe button. Don't forget, go check out Neil at Dig Drive DIY, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.